Hello and welcome to this episode for Electropages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. And today, again, we're here at Embedded World 2025 Nuremberg and I'm joined by Maria from Sphera Labs, co-founder. Nice to meet you again. Nice. Lovely, actually lovely to meet you as always. And on the podcast a few years ago, we had your husband, Odrico. But now we've got the other half, the brilliance behind Sphera Labs. And thank you for having us today. Thank you for inviting me. So just before we jump into everything that you're showing off today, just tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. Well, uh, my name is Maria and, uh, well, I am an electrical engineer and basically I do everything that the other in the company don't want to do. I run the company. <laughs> everything that Old Rico doesn't want to do. <laughs> exactly. So I, I am supervising, I mean, manufacturing, uh, procurement, uh, engineering, uh, and also finance. Fantastic. Now, now, if I remember correctly, when we had a, we had a few conversations uh, yeah. when we had our when we had dinner a few uh, um, was it a few months ago now I think about six months ago or so, and uh, I think there was a there was a conversation where we talked about uh, your first date with your husband. I think was actually around designing PCBs or software. Was that, was that correct? Was a design actually was writing a computer. Oh uh, yes, I remember this. Sorry. Yes, I know. Uh, so. Yeah, we, we had sort of a com competition at the university. We were uh, in Italy uh, in the part part of a university. And we were competing with Berkeley, uh, California, oh, uh, writing a compiler. And uh, we had a sort of a schedule and a time mm. frame. And uh, of course, the Americans were very respectful. And so they only worked Monday to Friday, nine to five. Of course. <laughs> You're like, Saturday, Sunday, not a problem. We kind of worked 20 to <laughs> seven. And of course we won the race. Fantastic. And, uh, my computer, uh, my, my compiler was just just a little bit more than Ulderica's compiler, so it's still angry. I, 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 bet, I bet he feels that every my, single day. Uh, yes, he's, he's really, uh, he said it, it is unfair. You know, how much do you want to bet that in the evenings when you go to bed, he's sitting there trying to make a slightly better compiler, but he still can't quite do it. <laughs> no, he, try, he tries to prevent me to write any Ooh. software now because... Oh, blimey, blimey. Anyway. Yeah. So we've got some fantastic stuff here. So just tell the audience what it is that you guys actually uh, manufacture and design. So we uh, manufacture servers, IO modules, and uh, environmental sensors uh, for uh, industrial automation. Most of them, uh, all of them based on open architecture and uh, many of them based on Raspberry Pi. Uh, why? Uh, what we want to give? We want to give the industrial customers something that is open, so they're not tied up with one supplier, one PLC programmer, mm. or one specific software. They can decide how they want to shape their application, but mm. they can also make it evolve as their needs <laughs> grow. Uh, what do they need? They need um, high quality electronics, uh, and that's what we add to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, they need uh, endurance over time, long time availability. The same, we sell the same modules that we sold in 2014, we sell it now. And it is 100% compatible with what we were selling 10 years ago. So this is what they need because the application an industrial application takes years to be developed. It, it, it's not going to change for 20 years. It will still be the same system. Yes, mm. and they don't want to do that over and over again uh, every, every few years. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, so, we started with the single board computers, mm. and now we're moving towards the CM modules. Uh, why? Because with the CM modules, the industrial customer is free from worrying about the form factor. Yeah. So, for example, this is a module based on the CM, the CM3 Plus or the CM4S, they don't know. I mean, they know because they want specific, you know, specifications, but they don't have to change the enclosure. They don't have to change their uh, switchboard, their central panel. They don't have to touch it. This is our last baby, our latest baby. Uh, it's a server based on uh, the CM4 or 5. Uh, the cute things about this is that the expansion are inside. So you don't have to buy your PLC and then Expansion, expansion, and expansion. You just put your uh, expansion inside. It takes uh, either one or up to four boards, and you can add ports like RS-485, RS-422, up to 16 485, uh, 16 RS-422, CAN, uh, UPS, uh, and 
uh, we are uh, we are presenting today analog inputs and outputs, and uh, uh, there is also UPS and LTE. Hmm. But since the creativity of our customers has no limits, hmm. we have decided to publish the standard, the electrical and mechanical standard for the X2 boards, uh, so they will be able to design their own uh, custom hmm. boards. We also created a development board to make them easy for them to prototype their own application. And then we can assist them if they want us with you know, certification, test, industrialization, but they have the possibility to do prototyping on their own. So I've got a couple of questions around this uh, platform. Um, I think we'll start with the first one, which is probably the more basic question. Um, I've used PLCs a number of times and I, from various manufacturers. And let's be honest, we all know that they are really hard and fiddly to get right. Uh, which is why having something based on a Raspberry Pi architecture makes a lot of sense. But the difference that you seem to mention between this and a typical PLC is that you call this an industrial server. So what I really want to know is what, what, what applications would an industrial server do and what makes it different to a typical PLC? Well, uh, it's uh, on industrial servers, uh, the, the, the key things is uh, data collection. I mean, right. they can read data from um, machinery, from energy consumption, uh, energy quality. For example, one big application that we do on this base is uh, for, a, for a big multinational company is en energy quality control. I mean, a an industrial machinery costs millions of yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, and if there is a, a spike in the, in, I mean, in the, in the first stage, the whole machine can break down. So they have to, to, to manage all this data. They have to speak many languages. Uh, they have to manage the database in a way that is accessible, that is reliable, that is redundant. All these functionalities cannot be done on a PLC. You need a high-level programming language to do that. And and so, and so your typical PLC is usually microcontroller based. It can do a, exactly. it, it, it can do ladder logic, but it but it's kind of very restricted in what it can do. Whereas this system, you can have, you can run a Linux system, which can have all kinds of services on top, connect wirelessly over networks, and it just gives you that much more power when designing an industrial system. Exactly. Uh, in in fact, with this and this, with a Stratos by Max, you can do both because. Mm you have the possibility to, let's say, you have to sample a machinery yeah. and you have to sample it at that specific moment. So you cannot uh, you cannot uh, wait for this operating system yeah. to do its job. Yeah. So you can continue working on a high level on the operating system and then you can go, you can write software just to go straight through the micro microcontroller directly sampling the machine. And and that's where your your own custom board might come into use. So let's say I want a, like a real time system that's very, that that works as is. I can put a microcontroller on the first uh, on the first card that goes in, and then the main high level system then can read data off that as needed. Well, you already have it. The, the oh. RP twenty forty is inside here. So the RP twenty forty is in there. Yes. So you can Ooh. already do that within the, the within the, the Strato by Max. Also, we have a very precise uh, AD. Um, converter on the analog board. So it has been designed for industrial, I mean. So, uh, so, so, you've, so you've got a dedicated analog to digital converter. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna very, very quickly mention, I, I really appreciate that you guys have designed that because the RP2040 is a fantastic microcontroller, but everyone knows that the analog inputs to that thing can be a little bit noisy. So it's great to see that you've, you've pulled that off, put it onto a digital bus, and then you can read that with a really high accuracy uh, I'm guessing it's isolated and electrically isolated from the rest of the circuit. So it's got a exactly. really robust design, which is absolutely fantastic. Which um, has been a demand for a number mm. of, we have a few products with this particular mm. feature because again, it's, it's a strong uh, requirement from the industrial mm. customers. Now, one question I've got about this new, uh, this, this new open design. Mm. Is something like this available as like a, as like a footprint or a library for things like KiCad and other sort of EDA uh, tools? So it, let's say I let's say I want to implement this in my own design. Do you currently have an offering that allows me to sort of drop and place it into my CAD design? Oh well, we use a standard uh, design tool, so oh, I perfect. guess you can export. Oh, perfect. And, and, so, and, so, and so that design file is available. Exactly. Well, there you go. That's perfect. So so. It, what, what kind of uh, what kind of deployments do you do you see this being used in? What, what kind of custom circuits do you think customers are going to use this for, or anything well, they, 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 anything they want? <laughs> I mean, everything that is not worth developing. I mean, 
we work, everything we do is made in Italy, from the PCB to the enclosure to everything. Uh, so we can work on very small lots. Yeah. But a very small lot means maybe 100 yeah. units. Uh, so uh, probably uh, there are customers that just need the board because they have a legacy system. Yeah. And that particular legacy system has maybe, they have to interface one or two or three of them. Mm. So it's easier for them just to develop something. We can help them, of course, uh, just to interface that old system. And thanks to the fact that they can have a high level programming language, they can mix the uh, signals from the old system with the mm. ones from the newer newer systems, which are probably, I don't, so, I don't know, RS-45, for example. So is it possible for us to get a look on the inside of one of these, or is sure, it? Sure, I just need a screwdriver. Absolutely. So after violating some health and safety rules, we've finally got the units open. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look on the inside. So just tell us what's going on with your, uh, the bigger model here, with your expansion cards. Okay, so uh, here you can see that you have the, uh, you have the main server, so the CM5 mm -hmm. and the SSD. Oh, brilliant. It's got an SSD as well. Yes. Oh, fantastic. And then you've got your expansion slots here where people can uh, basically exactly. expand yeah, this PLC into anywhere they want. For them. So you see there are, uh, I think one is the RS485, RS232, and the other one is the CAN, I think. And. Uh, there are three actually here. There's, there's one, one, two, three. But yes, number of, and, and the, you have one free slot. That's right, yeah. And uh, uh, there is also a, the possibility of a double SD card mm -hmm. inside, so it's three, three storage options. And, uh, well, that's basically it. It's very easy. You just plug the... Mm. Uh, you can you just plug the, the card in, mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, all the... Uh, it has... Uh, Okay. Oh no. Okay. That's one. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. That's one. Removable. Yep. Removable. So it's it's easy for you to because you you can see when it's mounted. I mean, it's easier to yeah. take this out and to to mount it. So yes, that's basically what it is. And there is a fan, as you, you can see. Even if with the CM5, we also uh, mount the uh, heat sinker. Mm. So. Fantastic. This is a CM4. So, mm -hmm. so going sort of forward into the future with your next designs around the corner, what do you think is going to be the big... Start that question again. I apologize. Sorry. So we've seen these new products that you are now releasing, but what do you think is going to be the next challenge for industrial engineers? Well, it's... I think that the, the big challenge is... Uh, moving to uh, consistency in using real, real, real industrial product and real industrial application, high level application. So moving away from the old culture of having something that is static and stays where it is because, I mean, you buy a software and you yeah. take a, and it lasts forever and the world is, changes too rapidly, even in industrial automation, new things new challenges and, uh, and that's very interesting because it's because like like you say with a raspberry pi based platform not only can you change the software as you go but it it, it it can move faster with the times so you take like an old plc for example once the, once the software support for that's gone it's going to be almost impossible to use it people new people coming into the industry don't know how to use it and like you say they have to try and keep that system working for the next 20 years if a, if a system like this comes along it's kind of like well just chuck that one out put a new one in the software will still work, it's backward compatible. Yeah. And, 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 and as a result, you can continue to make your machinery work in the same way, but you can then upgrade the hardware as time progresses without losing that compatibility with new technology coming in. Exactly. New things, new, new protocols, new ports, new speed, new, for example, this kind of SSD didn't even exist until exactly. two years ago. And, 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 and there's no way you could put that in, in an old PLC. It's not going to happen. But with a platform like this, and also uh, the fact that it's an open platform. If you have a bug mm. of some kind in, in a standard product, let's say PLC, mm. all you have to have to do is wait for the next piece. There's nothing you can do. Mm. On Raspberry Pi, whatever happens, the community is going to sort it out quickly. I mean, we have read stories of things mm. that 
happened and stayed like that for years because because of it. You have to wait for the manufacturer to change the firmware, the design, or something. Uh, with the Raspberry Pi, uh, the community helps uh, helps everybody with the with the software. And with the hardware, it's normally the matter of a couple of jumpers. And, so. then, and that also means that when it, it, mm -hmm. it, if security issues are found, they get patched much faster. And you yeah. can push those updates out much faster because again, it's a server, it can, it can have internet connectivity. You can push these update, updates out and, it's, and it protects you quicker than, let's, let's be honest, a lot of PLCs in the market, which are manufactured by private companies, and they tend to be a lot slower to respond to those kind of security fixes. Because they're not they're not commonly used amongst exactly the here public. you have the the it's already built for mm. let's say security so for example it has mm. two Ethernet ports mm. it is a basic security in industrial automation mm. no one can attack clean clean air mm. I mean so if you keep your network separate one mm. of them is safe so that's why you have two at Ethernet oh, ports. Right. Because it's it's a basic principle that internal in, network, external network sort of thing. Exactly. Mm. So that's why we put uh, all the versions have two Ethernet ports. Oh right. Uh, all our products have. Oh the, yeah. LAN one, LAN yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't realize. And, oh brilliant. Uh, and this is, for example, something that traditional products just don't have. Yeah. And uh, also, for example, all our products have the secure element chip. Oh excellent, excellent. That you can use in different time, different ways, but it's important to build a secure application. Uh, so yeah, and uh, one thing is uh, that I have already said, but I think it's important for automation. When you work at the high level, uh, 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 high level programming language, you can still work with old devices. Your old PLC, it's probably reachable in Modbus server mode, and a high level language can read data from that PLC. So you don't have to destroy yeah. that apparatus while keeping. I mean, a modern and secure, possibly, uh, application. So, yes, industrial automation has to understand that moving to towards, I mean, high-level language, high-level programming language, keeping the possibility to go, I mean, at the microcontroller level, if you really need speed, if you really need precision in the moment, you have to sample, for example, data. But, as you said, they are free to evolve. Mm. towards you know more uh, and the best part is if, they, if somebody does need a very unique solution that requires high speed that's where their own custom design can come in slot onto the board and work with your uh, with your with your industrial server fantastic so just before we wrap this video up i've got one more question for you for the audience who are watching this video if they want to get involved with uh, Sphero lab solutions what would you recommend that they do just call us call them we always answer. There you go. Always answer. Well, thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you.